Hello, 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 and welcome tonight. The time is 7.30 on that clock, which means it's time for Sharp Points, a program based on Proverbs 27 and 17 that declares that iron sharpeneth iron, so that the man sharpeneth the counsel of his friends. And I call you friend because we are trusting in the Lord. This is the day and hour in which we must trust God like we never have before. You know, the Bible says in Psalms 19 and verse seven, how that the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Isn't that powerful that the law of God is perfect and it converts the soul? And then it goes on to say to us in Psalms 19 and verse seven, how that the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So we are here tonight so that our souls can be changed and we will turn into that other being that God wants us to turn into, to go from glory to glory, from faith to faith and from strength to strength. So welcome tonight. Get on the phone, text somebody, call them, email them. Let's make these moments count. Hallelujah. In fact, it's been said that time is non-refundable Therefore, we have to use it intentionally. What did I just say? Time is non-refundable. You can't get it back. <laughs> so we must use it intentionally. And let's do that tonight. We're going to make these moments count. We're going to make these moments dynamic for us tonight. Get on the phone. Text somebody. Call them. Email them. Let them know that, hey, this is a night in which we're going to hear the word of God. I'm asking those of you that are part of the phone tree at Newness of Life Christian Center. Come on, let's awaken our brothers. Let's awaken our sisters and cause them to get what God wants them to have because of his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe that God wants to say something powerful to us tonight and we need to let him speak and let him say it. And let him have his way. It's been said it's not enough to stare up the steps. You have to walk up the steps. So we just want you to just stand and look. We want you to make something happen for somebody else. Don't just stare up the steps. Amen. We must step up in the stairs. Amen. And make something happen tonight. That's right. Don't just stare up the steps. Let's make up and decide that I'm going to step up the stairs and get what belongs to me. Father, I thank you tonight for your richness of your word. I thank you that you will indeed think through my mind, speak through my lips, a relevant word that will forever be life changing. I glorify you for what you're going to do and say in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Well, let's go. Let's get in this word. <clears throat> We're dealing with part two of a message that is very, very important. We're talking about having an established heart. Having an established heart is very, very important that we who are born again, we are in the kingdom of God, have a heart that's established and fixed in God. We need something stable in the midst of these unstable times. We're in times in which things can swing from one extreme to a whole nother extreme. The pendulum seems to, to just go from one thing all the way to another. Have you seen how things went for those people there in Kentucky? One day they got their house. One day they got their jobs. One day everything is fine. And then the next whoosh, Fire consumes everything or water consumes everything. This is the day and time in which we're in. But in the midst of all of this, we know one thing that God is good. His mercy endured forever. And God is able to take what the devil means for evil and turn it all around for his glory and cause his goodness to be seen and his mercy to be expressed as we're living in this day and time. Listen at Hebrews 13, verses 8 and 9. It says, Jesus Christ, the same, not something that swings and goes along with times and months and years. No, no, no. 
Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. Be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines, for it is good that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. Now, we know the Hebrew writers writing to a group of people who were Jews and who were Hebrews, and they had an understanding that certain meats, according to the law of Moses and other things, they have to abstain from, not eat, and do all that. But this writer is trying to say to us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the only way for man to get to God and have a relationship with God is through his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, when he came on the scene, he healed the sick, he cast out devils, and he caused the enemy to be put to flight. So we understand that Jesus Christ is at work today through you and I, because Jesus told us when he went away that he would make sure that we have another comforter, the Holy Spirit. And then he tells us that these works shall we do and greater works than these would we do because he would go to the father. So therefore, Christ is at work in us doing the same thing that Jesus did when he was here on this earth. And it's very, very important that we get our hearts established that when we see and continually hear of tragedies and these shootings and other things that's happening in our world, that we never for one moment believe that God is behind it or God is angry at man to such a degree that God is making it happen. We need to get our hearts established in the goodness of God. We need to get our hearts established in the grace of God. We need to get our hearts established that God is a healer, that God wants us to put our trust in him and fix our minds and our hearts on him and not be moved or shaken by anything that goes on around us because great is he that is in us than he that is in the world. God wants the church in this season like never before to have our hearts established that nothing moves us, that we're not shaken in our minds, that we're not stressed out, that we're not worried, that we're not suicidal, that we're not thinking about hurting anyone, but we have our focus on Jesus. The Bible said it this way, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, believing that what? He who had begun a good work in us, he will perform it. That's what the book of Philippians says, that when God who starts a work in us, is not going to allow that work to end, but he's going to keep that work going on and on and on, even until the day of perfection in which Jesus cracks the sky. Now, listen, real change, real change always starts in the heart and ends with your mind and your mouth. What did I just say? Real change always starts in the heart and ends up in your mind and in your mouth. This is very, very important. Jesus said, out of the abundance, the heart speak it or the mouth speak it, which is connected to the heart. So out of the abundance of the heart, he said, the mouth speaks. So what we believe in our heart is so important because that's what's going to come out of our mouth. Not what others say, but what we believe in our heart. Listen at what Romans 10 and 10 says. Romans chapter 10 and verse 10. It says, for with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation unto deliverance, until the breakthrough, until we see what God has purposed and ordained for our lives. Man, what believes in his heart, but he makes confession with his mouth. 
The Bible says we having the same spirit of faith. We therefore believe and therefore we speak. What do we speak? We speak out of our spirit. So it's important that our hearts be established so we won't speak fear, so we won't speak doubt, so we won't speak discouragement, so we won't speak those things that give place to demonic spirits, but rather we speak those things that give place for Gabriel and Michael and the other angels to operate. Come on, have you today spoken things that have given your angels an opportunity to work? Oh, did you hear what I just said? Have you today used your mouth to speak those things that have given your angels an opportunity to move, to work, because they are ministering spirits and they are hearkening to the voice of God's word. So when we speak the word of God, it gives our angels an opportunity to move, to shift things, to move things in our favor and cause God's will to be carried forth. Mm, mm, mm. Hallelujah. Come on. Type that in somewhere. Say, I'm speaking those things that's giving the angels an opportunity to move. That's right. I'm releasing my angels. That's right. Just say that. I'm releasing my angels. How are you releasing them? Because I'm speaking those things that are in line with the word of God, which is the will of God. And I'm speaking out of an established heart. Listen, when you and I speak, we establish the word in the earth and you and I establish the word in our heart. Did you hear what I just said? When you and I speak, we establish the word of God in the earth and we establish the word of God in our hearts. So it's important that we speak based on an established heart and not a heart that is caught up in the natural, but a heart that's caught up in the word and the will of the father. Listen at Psalm 23, verse four in the Passion Translation. Psalm 23, you know Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Make it me to lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul, leadeth me beside still water, all of that. Listen at it in the Passion Translation. It says, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me. Listen at that. Fear will never conquer me. See, remember I said to you, even in our book called uh, Let the Prophet Speak, I give a testimony how that God in a vision took me up and was taking me up to the third heaven. In the second heaven, however, he told me, do not be afraid. And I saw these unbelievable, these ugly creatures, and I felt fear in my body. And I woke up out of the dream after God took me from the second heaven to the third heaven where his presence was. I woke up and God said to me that no plan of the enemy or no plan of the devil can ever work without fear. That the devil cannot move in our lives if we don't fear. That's why when that man was there and they came to Jesus and the man and said to the man, trouble not Jesus anymore. Your, your child is dead. Jesus immediately looks at him and says, fear not, only believe. Because the devil will send a report and allow things to be seen in the natural to cause fear. God continually tells us in his word, fear not. Fear not. Why? Because I am with you. Fear not. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. So fear will never conquer me for you already have. 
In other words, you've already taken control of me. So I'm not going to let fear take control of my mind, take control of my attitude, take control of my spirit, because God is the one who's Lord over my life. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. Remember what the Bible says in the book of first John, perfect love cast out fear. So we know without a shadow of doubt that we are loved of God, that God loves us. He so loved us that he gave his only begotten son. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him freely give us all things? Knowing that God loves us gets rid of the fear. I'll never be lonely for you are near. Now, let me read Psalm 23 and 4 also in the EASY translation. It says, I may walk through a valley that is as dark as death. Listen at this. But I will not be afraid of any danger. Listen at this man speaking. I will not be afraid of any danger. This is because you are with me, Lord. You're with me, Lord. That's why I'm not scared. God is with us. Emmanuel, God with us. God is with us. This is Psalm 23 and 4 in the EASY. He said, your stick and your shepherd's pole make me feel brave. <laughs> Where's the bravery in the church right now? We ought to be brave. The righteous are bold as a lion. Y'all know Pastor Susan gave us that this past Sunday at Newness of Life, talked about boldness. So we ought to be brave. Why? Because God is our shepherd. He's going to protect us. He's going to keep us. He's going to make sure that we're led to green pastors, lavish pastors, fat pastors. Remember I said this is the year of fatness where God is making his people fat spiritually and fat naturally. Now, we said that our established heart is always based on impartation. That's why the enemy works overtime to keep people from hearing the word, be it on Facebook, be it on YouTube, or be it going into the local assembly. Anyway, right? Notice, I always notice that newness of life. That the devil will allow the saints to go to work Monday through Friday, but Saturday or Saturday night, he comes up with all kinds of attacks against the saints. To what? Or early Sunday morning to keep them from making that Sunday service where they can hear the word and get an impartation. The word of God is seed going into our hearts. There's an impartation that you need and Satan knows it. So you got to wake up and put on this armor and fight those demonic spirits that will try to do things to try to make your head hurt, your back hurt, your leg hurt. The children get into something. He'll do anything to try to keep you away from where your impartation lies. Your impartation is very important, important. You need impartation. Listen, look at Romans 1 and 11. Romans 1 and 11. He said, for I long to see you. This is Paul talking to the saints at Rome. I long to see you. Now notice Paul was writing letters, but he said, I still long to see you. There's something about being where people are. I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift or spiritual grace. The word gift is charis, where we get our English word charismatic or charismata from. It deals with the ability of God. See, whenever the word goes forth, the word, it is the thing that causes skill and ability to be given to you. The word gives skill. That's right. The more words you get in you, the more skillful you are at using what God has given you 
as well as receiving more from God. So there's a spiritual, it's not natural, it's spiritual impartation taking place. Ta 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 ba ba. See, the word of God gets you pregnant with the message that's being birthed out of the heavenly realm. When God speaks to a man or woman of God, there's something God wants to give birth to us with. And it takes the word, which is the word of God. The Bible says in the book of Peter that the word of God and he used the word there for word spermata, where we get our English word sperm from. So the word gets us pregnant with stuff that we could never get pregnant with without hearing the word of God. So when we hear the word of God, it's an impartation. He said that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. Watch this. To the end, ye may be established. You see, that's what the ultimate thing is. When God gives this word through that man of God or through that woman of God, it establishes you in present truth. It establishes you so that you will not be moved by the lies that God already knows the devil is getting ready to sin against you. Satan has already been lying to you that you're no good, that you ain't worth nothing, that you will never have nothing, you will never be nothing, that you ain't who God says you are. All of these lies and you need the word that will cut through all that and bring an impartation that will cause you to give birth to the supernatural lifestyle and the supernatural man or the supernatural woman that God has ordained for you to be. God never intended for you to walk as a carnal, natural man. God created you for supernatural exploits. He created you to live as a supernatural being here on planet Earth, to take dominion over every foe that rises up. Let, what did I just say? To take dominion over every force of hell that demonic powers will be put under your feet and mine and we will tread over serpents, over scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. But we can't do it without a spiritual impartation because the spiritual gift that is imparted through the word of God causes us to be established in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's look at this. This is important. Paul is saying, I long to see you. Well, where brother so-and-so? They ain't coming to church tonight, Pastor. Why come? They said they were tired. Where's the so-and-so? They ain't coming tonight, Pastor. They said they ain't feel like coming. Why are they feeling like that? And why do you want them to be there? Don't nobody want you to come to the house. Of God. Look, any great leader is way past counting numbers. One thing the pandemic should have told a lot of these men that were bragging about their numbers to shut that kind of spirit off because that wasn't the right spirit from the start with. We recognize that all souls belong to God. And uh, whether you're pastoring 30 or whether you're pastoring 30,000, it doesn't matter to God. All the souls belong to God. What God is more interested in is that those that he called and assigned to your care that you give them the truth because the truth sets them free. And whenever they hear words coming out of your mouth, it should be words of truth. It should be words that bring to them a spiritual impartation so that they will be established so that when the culture and the world around them tries to seduce them, which is it going on now at an all time high. The enemy is trying to seduce the work, the church through cursing, through drinking, through pardon, through listening at their corrupt music. But if you hear the word of God. The word should have you so established and so fixed that you do not give in to the stupidity and the ignorance around you. Remember now 
These people who are living that way that you used to live are doing it through ignorance. The same way you did it. You and I did it through ignorance. We were out there partying, drinking, cussing because we did not know. But once you know the truth, now you establish in that truth and you're not moved by what they're doing. You're not moved by how they're living. You're called to help bring them in rather than let them take you out because your heart is established. You're not afraid of the trouble. You're not afraid of gas prices. You're not afraid of inflation. You're not afraid of anything because you understand that through God, I shall wax boldly and through God, I shall run through a troop and leap over a wall through God. Though multitudes rise up against me, I will not fear because when I got God on my side, I got more than enough to win. That's where God wants his church established now that our minds are not worried up. We recognize we brought nothing into this world. Certain we can take nothing out. We recognize that God is our source, that the Lord is our light, our salvation. And I'm going to trust God no matter what. You know, those saints have always sing that song. Pastor Reese said a long time ago, he said, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord till I die. That's what they felt like. I'm going to trust in the Lord till I die. Now, I'm going to stay on the battlefield till I die. That's what that's the they were established. Now, listen, two things we must fix or establish our heart. Two things we must have to fix or establish our heart. Number one. Two things we must fix or establish our hearts to do, rather. Two things we must fix or establish our hearts to do. Number one, fix your heart or establish your heart to trust in the Lord. That's right. That's right. Look at Psalm 112, verses 7 and 8. Psalm 112, verses 7 and 8. Psalm 112, verse 7 and 8. Got to move quickly now. Psalm 112, verse 7 and 8 says, He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed. Trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. That's powerful stuff. Psalm 112 verse 7 and 8. You're not to be afraid of evil tidings. We are hearing them and we're going to hear much, much more of them. All of that is to scare you, to worry you, to trouble you. Remember Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. We shouldn't have our hearts troubled by what's going on around us. Don't get troubled about layoffs on the job, inflation, gas prices, talking about ain't enough candy going to be there for Halloween, all this kind of stuff. Whatever they're coming out with, they're going to come out with more and more stuff to try to get you afraid. But don't you let fear grip you at all. Come on, saints. We got God. Hallelujah. And so we should trust in God. This man said, my heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. I'm not going to be scared of evil tidings, bad news. Hallelujah. Well, the doctor said they saw this. Shut up. I believe God. I'm healed with his stripes. I know God can turn it around. There ain't nothing he can't heal. There ain't nothing he can't remove out of this body. He created the body. And since he created it, he can heal it. Since he made it, he can fix it. Since he made it, I believe him to satisfy me with long life. I'm going to stand on what God's word said. I'm going to get fixed on what God said. And I'm not going to allow evil tidings to cause me to be afraid. Hallelujah. This word established is the Hebrew word kamak or samak, which means to prop yourself, to lean upon, to take hold of, to bear up. I'm going to let God bear me up. I'm going to prop myself on the Lord. Hallelujah. You ought to lean on the Lord. Lean on the Lord. Hallelujah. Not to your own understanding. Trust in the Lord 
and lean not. Don't prop on your own understanding. Lean on the Lord. This word means to rest self. This word established, some mark that's used here to rest yourself. Come on. If we believe God, we're in a rest. We're in a place of rest. No worry. No fear. Just resting in the Lord. Hallelujah. It means to stand fast, to sustain, to support, to brace oneself. Here's what I love. To uphold, to lean upon, to lean against. And listen at these last ones. It means to refresh and it means to revive. Come on, saints. I believe like never before. If we're trusting in God, we're going to each and every day feel refreshed. Each and every day feel revived. 17 again. 19 again. Come on, saints. Seven. I'm, I'm, I'm pumping this to you because I'm telling you God wants us to be get our youth renewed, refreshed, revived. How are you going to feel refreshed and revived? Looking at what's going on around you and believing all these evil tidings. No, glory to God. You got to tell that devil, devil, you a liar. I will be debt free. Every bill that comes my way, it will be paid. I will not lose what I got now. God is bringing me to a place of increase and favor and open doors and open opportunities. And my latter years will be greater than anything I've experienced thus far. For the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former house. And the best is yet to come. I have not seen Ear have not heard, neither have entered into the hearts of men the things which God hath prepared for me. There's some great stuff in my future, and I'm going to move from my past and lay hold of my future. Hallelujah. Come on, saints. Get excited about your future. Get excited about your tomorrow. Get excited because why? You are a person with an established heart. This is your time of revival. This is your time of refreshing. Oh my goodness. And the second and last point is fix your heart, or establish your heart with singing and giving God praise. Singing and giving God praise helps establish your heart. Hallelujah. All day long, my wife and I, we was just right here singing and talking about these good songs that's out. Going back to certain songs and singing, amen, hallelujah, glory to God. We were singing Donna McClurkin's song that said, speak to my heart, Lord, give me your holy word. Then we're singing other songs, glory to God, I'm trading my sorrow, trading my pain, all that, amen, hallelujah, glory to God. God is good. All of these songs, just singing to, listen, listen, Psalm 57 verses 6 and 7 says, they have prepared a net for my steps. The devil got a trap for us. But watch this. My soul is bowed down. They have digged a pit before me into the midst where they are falling themselves. See law. See, every plan of the devil that he's tried to destroy you with, he's going to fall in his own trap. My heart is fixed. Oh, God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Hallelujah. See, you ought to have a song. A song needs to carry you through your day. Every day, get you a song. Mother Brown taught me this years and years ago when I first got born again. Mother Brown was telling me, I was talking to her about my job one day. She said, she said, she said uh, get you a little song. She said, every day, get you a little song. You need a song in your heart. Every day, you need a song. Every day, you need a song, a gospel song. A song about God's goodness, a song about God's favor, a song that blesses you, a song that carries you through. Glory to God. A song that sings, un that you can sing unto the Lord because that fixes your heart, that establishes your heart. Look at this Psalm 108, verses 1, 2, and 3, the last verse for tonight. Psalm 108, 1, 2, and 3 says, Oh God, my heart is fixed. There it is again. My heart is fixed. David had his heart fixed. What did David do all the time? He sang songs. He sung praises. Listen to what he said. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. Awake, psaltery and harp. I myself will awake early. I will praise the old Lord among the people. 
I will sing praises unto thee among the nations. That's right. Hallelujah. So we're talking about having an established heart, not being double minded, not being moved by what you see. Paul said with all that he was going through, he said, none of these things move me. What's moving you tonight? What's trying to throw your mind into worry? What's trying to throw your mind into fear? Whatever it is, cast that care on the Lord and begin to fix your heart on trusting God. Because if you trust him, you will see breakthrough. If you trust him, you will see increase. If you trust him, you will see his good hand over your life. Because remember what Psalm 23 said, goodness and mercy shall follow me, not some of the days, all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching this tonight. Keep your heart established in God. Don't let evil tidings, don't let the fear and the doubt and the negativity that's coming from the world crowd your mind and mess you up. No, wake up and begin to get up and begin to say, great is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Listen at me, saints. Guard your spirit Friday night and Saturday night so that no demon in hell can mess you up from Sunday morning. That you can get in that house of God and give God glory. Hallelujah. He'll do everything to try to make people not be where that impartation is. He doesn't want you to get your impartation. You need a spiritual impartation to be established against the onslaughts of darkness. He's coming. Remember, the Bible said through this faith, we can quench all the fiery darts of the devil. You need the word of God to quench the darts that he's throwing. And he's throwing more and more fiery darts because he's getting more and more ammunition from people who are speaking doubt, people who are speaking unbelief, people who are turning their minds away from God and yet needing God's help. But they're trusting in a system that's failing them. This system will fail you, but God will not fail you. He's good and he's ready to help you. He's ready to assist you. He's ready to turn it around for you that are in Kentucky, for you that are in any area where there's been floods, where there's been fire. I'm a living witness. In 1999, we went through the flood, but God gave us double for our trouble. So I'm telling you, there is a God who can help you rebuild everything you lost, help you get it back bigger and better if you would trust him. If you trust him, he'll provide and show you that he is Jehovah Jireh. God will provide. I'm out of time. I got to go. Thank you for watching tonight. Listen, all of you who watch tonight, thank you. Shout out to my man, Vincent Bellamy, and to your lovely wife, Evangelist Jackie Bellamy. So come on, saints, guard yourself. Hallelujah. I want to say to all you August people, happy, happy birthday to all the August people. Again, a shout out to Miss Dottie Bell White. Happy birthday to Miss Dottie Bell. I talked about it last time on Tuesday night. She's 96 years young. <laughs> 96 years young. I'm believing God to get that old and keep moving. And she's 96 years old. Amen. And still got her good mind. Ain't that wonderful? Amen. A shout out also. Amen. Again to uh, who else got a birthday? Yeah. Prophetess Sylvia Anderson had a birthday. Got had a birthday this month. In August, in this week, just had a birthday. Brother Carl Mays had a birthday this month. And happy birthday to you, Brother Carl. Prophetess Sylvia Anderson this week, this past week. Hey, and guess what? Mother Hammond got a birthday coming up this month. And my natural mother. That's right. Shirley Sharp has a birthday coming up this month. August the 25th. And so we're excited. We'll be talking more about my mother and how what kind of special person she's been to my life. And I love her dearly. Amen. Shout out to all of you August people. Again, remember, if you got this message, 
hit the like button, hit the share button, hit the follow button. So anytime we come on, you can catch up with us. God is speaking. God is moving and we glorify him. Listen, if you desire to be saved, give us a call after this program is going off. 252-563-5382. Listen, nothing matters if you profit and gain the whole world, but you lose your soul. You only got one soul. And Jesus came that you might surrender your life to God and be his representative here on the earth. He wants you. He wants to use you for his glory. So give us a call after this program goes off 252-563-5382. We look forward to hearing from you again. All these messages can be viewed on Facebook as well as on YouTube. Amen. And we're here each and every Tuesday night at 730 is our Bible study every Thursday at seven o'clock. And we know that these messages are life changing. They're God sent. And we thank God for you. Listen, each and every Sunday morning, we are back in the building at 10 (laughs) a.m. Praise and worship time begins. Prayer and praise and worship time begins at 10 a.m. Hallelujah. And the glory has been falling in the house and we glorify God. Listen, at 1030 each and every Sunday morning on Facebook and YouTube. Simultaneously, you can watch us and hear the word of God each and every Sunday at 1030. Amen. From the sanctuary of newness of life. Christian So you can't be there physically. You can still watch it and get the word on the inside. Get that impartation that you need to establish your heart in the kingdom. Now, there are several ways to give to us. If you would like to be a blessing to our ministry and sow good seed into good ground, here's the way you do it. I'm here to tell you, God will honor your gift. God is a God who will multiply the seed sown. It's no gimmick. It's the way the kingdom of God operates. It's the kingdom of God principle that if you sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. If you sow a little, you only get back a little. That is a principle of life. That's with anything. Anything works this way. Everything works through seed time and harvest. That's the truth. Amen. If you sow a lot of trouble, guess what you get back? A lot of trouble. (laughs) Amen. If you sow kind words, guess what you get back? Kind words. It multiplies. So we want you to sow this good seed into good soil. Newness of life is good, a good soil for you to sow. Listen, we are on several TV stations. We have 11 acres of land that we want to build a brand new sanctuary. Listen, it's going to take millions to do it. It's going to take people like you who love the work of God enough that you will sacrifice and sow to the glory of God. Hallelujah. And so I want God to bring you out of debt. I want God to help you pay off every bill. Why? So he can give more to the kingdom. That's what he wants to do. And if you want it for that reason, he'll make it happen for you. Many people don't want it for that reason. But if you want money to be, God, I want this bill to be paid off. I want this car to be paid off so I can give more to your kingdom. I'm telling you, God will pay that thing off for you because he wants you to have more to give so that he can get what he wants done in the earth accomplished. It can't get done without men and women like you and I. The Bible said in Psalm 115 and verse number 16 that the heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's, but he has given the earth to the children of men. God wants us to take the men in the earth. We can't do it without people supporting what we do. Be a supporter of what we do. Here's the way you do it. You can write a check or a money order to Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina. The zip code is 27886. That address again is Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina, 27886. A seed of any size, amen, will help us do more for the glory of God. Or you can download the Vanco mobile app. Download the Vanco mobile app. You'll see this kind of sign pop up and you type in Newness of Life Christian Center. And when you type in Newness of Life Christian Center, you can sow that seed and be a blessing. 
to the work of God. Every bit of that will be used for the glory of God to get more done for his glory. Also, if you would like to be a blessing to Pastor Reese and I, you can easily do that. You don't have to, but if you want to, here's what you do. Go to your cash app, type in the dollar sign, R-E-V-S-H-A-R-P-E. And we appreciate all of you who have sown to our ministry, as well as those of you who have sown to Pastor Reese and I. Thank you so much. You didn't have to do it. But thank God for touching your heart and thank God for your obedience to obey him and do what he told you to do. Again, you go to your cash app, hit the dollar sign, R-E-V-S-H-A-R-P. And every penny that you give us, we will pray. More importantly, we pray for you that God even the more will bless you with more than you have thus far. It is a principle. Paul said, I'm not speaking in respect of want. For I know how to abound and I know how to be a base. In other words, I know how to be full and I know how to work with a little bit. He said, whatever state I'm in, I've learned how to be content. And I have my wife and I have. But we thank God that all our needs are met and everything that you sow to us. We pray God's choices, blessings over your life. We are good ground and you will get back a good, good harvest. Wait on it. Amen. You might not get it back the next day, but look for a harvest. One is coming. Cast your seed upon the waters. He said, you will find it. Cast your bread. The, the, your your uh, Bible says bread. It's the same thing. Cast your bread upon the waters and you will find it after many days. Hallelujah. There's not been a seed that you have sown to us that God doesn't see. And at the appropriate moment, he's going to reward you. Shout out to Curtis Bryant and Antoine. Okay, their birthday is Sunday. Oh my goodness. Happy, oh my goodness. The father and son birthday on the same day. Oh my goodness, my man, Curtis Bryant. Oh brother, we salute you. Military man, amen, as well as your son, Antoine. We salute you. You're in the military in the kingdom. <laughs> but we thank God for Amen. Brother Antoine, he plays skillfully on our keyboard. We, oh my God, what an anointed young man and his daddy. We appreciate you both on the same day. Happy birthday to you both. Amen. It's this Sunday, right? Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Antoine and Curtis Bryant. Happy birthday to you both. Amen. We, we salute you on that. Amen. Well, again, if you haven't gotten our books, get them, get them, get them. All this good material, I'm telling you, men, come on, men, get this book. Get it for the father in your life. Get it for the brother in your life. Get it for the uncle in your life. This book called I Am My Brother's Keeper, empowering men to take their place. There's a place that men need to get in. And when men get in that right place spiritually and become the leaders that God really want us to be as men, Things begin to fall in line. I'm telling you, this is powerful, this book right here. And women, we got one for you called Women of Substance, Taking New Steps to New Dimensions. Talk about being a smart woman. S-M-A-R-T. Stands for a significant, multitasking, authentic, revolutionary treasure. Any man that doesn't understand that about you will mishandle you. You are a significant, multitasking, authentic revolutionary treasure. And so you are to be valued. Good books that can be a blessing to you. Don't forget to get uh, the book, Let, Let the Prophet Speak and Long Distance Runner. These two can bless you along with death. Or need. In other words, get all 13. I ain't got time to talk about night. I got to go. I got to get out of here. Amen. Shout out to Bishop Ronald Wayne Sharp and Pastor Marjorie Sharp. They just celebrated, amen, 30, what, nine, 39 years of bliss, a marital bliss. They are married, been married for 39 years, and I love my sister-in-law, and I love my brother, amen, my wife, oh, and, yes. and, his, and his wife tease us all the time how that the sharp boys are so much alike, but we thank God, amen, for our wonderful wives. Thank God for Pastor Marjorie, amen, celebrated also a birthday. 
That's right. Her birthday was in July, July and she got married in July. Mm -hmm. So she celebrates them together. And so happy birthday again to you, Pastor Marjorie. Amen. We love you and we thank God for Powerhouse Church. Anytime you in Raleigh or near that area, check out Powerhouse Church. They are having services there in the Ezra building, amen, the Ezra Center, amen, in the Daniel room. And I'm telling you, great word is going forth. Some of you are able to watch them each and every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, amen, on Facebook. So again, you guys have a good night. Amen. Again, happy birthday to all the August people. You have a great night. See you Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, if you're able to be anywhere near Tarboro, but 1030 right on Facebook and YouTube. Have a great night.